let us start our today's class in the last class we were discussing on ac machines fundamentals we discussed on generator action and motor action let me review those actions suppose we are looking on the top we have north pole and south pole a wire is placed vertically on this paper we are applying some force for which we are getting some velocity magnetic field in this direction so this is generator action and as an output we will get electrical output that means the emf will be induced if the circuit is filled then the current will be flowing now what will be the direction of this current in order to know that let us draw this vector we have velocity from left to right and magnetic field in the downward direction if we apply flame x right hand rule the direction of the current will be through the paper so the current direction will be through the paper again if we describe the motor action motor actions mean we are applying some current through this conducting wire and this conductor is placed under this magnetic field now as an output we will get force what will be the direction of force the direction of force will be from right to left as it is drawn here how can we get that if we see this the direction of the magnetic field is downward and the direction of the current is through the paper so if we apply Fleming's left hand rule the direction of the force that is experienced by this wire will be in this direction so a direction will be like this this is what we completed in the previous lecture in today's lecture we will apply a conducting loop in order to analyze the situation a single loop in a uniform magnetic field let us draw a magnet here suppose we have a magnet and this side is named as north pole so this is one side of the magnet and a simple loop conducting loop is placed here in this fashion another pole south pole is drawn here this is south pole fields line are coming out from north to south suppose this single loop conducting wire is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction what will happen in this case now if we see the same figure from different views then things will be easier to understand suppose if we look from the top this is the top view and if we look from this side considering this surface on which we are looking at then this looking view can be said as side view so this is the top view this is the side view let us draw the top view first then we will draw the side view let me separate this question so that we can distinguish several figures if we draw the top view the thing will look like this we have north pole here and we will be having south pole and the loop where will look like this if we denote different corners like a b c and d we will have a b c b they are similar points the induced emf from a to b can be named as e b a the induced emf from c to d can be named as e b c now we'll see the polarity based on their rotation direction the rotation direction will be more clear if we have the side view side view means we are looking from this side that means thinking this surface on the top so the 
the diagram will look like this, this is the north side and this is the south side in order to have the similarities let me darken this side and from this side the wire will be looking like this we can see this line only because we are looking from this side and this wire is moving in the anti-clockwise direction as it is mentioned here and the field lines are moving from north to south for all the cases we have infinite number of field lines here in this side we will have a b point a b point and in this side we will have c b point let me write different names this is the top view this is the side view now let us analyze different different sections to get induced emf at different sections we know from our previous lecture the voltage induced that is E induced equal to V cross B where V is the velocity of the wire and B is the magnetic field multiplied with L length. So L is the length of this wire. If I say this is the length, so this is L. Here this complete distance can be defined as length as this conducting loop is rotating so different sections are cutting the magnetic field in different way so we'll try to figure out what is the voltage induced in a b section b c section t d section and a d section so let us first consider segment a b In segment AV, as it's rotating in the anticlockwise direction, so at any instant the velocity can be said in this direction V, the quantity of V cross B, that is B is moving from left to right and B is in this direction, so V cross B points into the page. Therefore, induced voltage on segment of the wire can be written as E B A equal to V cross B multiplied with length L where we can say V B L sine theta A B what is theta A B the angle difference between this velocity direction and the magnetic field direction and the direction will be into the page into the page you can write the direction by putting a cross here Hence, the direction of the current will be into the page means B to A. So, the polarity of B will be positive and the polarity of A will be negative. Now, let us consider the induced voltage in segment BC. For BC, we can see the length L is in the plane of the page and B cross B perpendicular to L. So, we can say the effective length which can be considered as zero. So, the voltage in the segment BC will be zero. We can say ECB equal to zero. Similarly, for segment CD, EDC, EDC equal to V cross B multiplied with L which can be said as V B L sine theta C D what is theta C D the angle difference angle difference between this movement we have movement in this direction as it is rotating in the anticlockwise direction V and the direction of B so we have a angle difference between them from here to here V cross B and for this case the v cross b we can see it's out of the page so we can write out of the page so these can be defined by a dot 
and the polarity can be written as D positive C negative. With the same explanation that we gave for segment BC, we can have uh, the induced EMF at DA section equal to 0. So, for segment BC and segment DA, I can, we can write here together that is E AD equal to 0 as well. Hence, the total induced voltage will be EBA plus ECB plus EAD plus EDC. As these two terms are 0, so we can say E induced, I mean total induced voltage equal to EBA plus EDC for our cases. We are ignoring these two terms as they have a value of 0. So, E induced can be written as V. B L I theta of A B plus B B L I theta of A D. Let us go to the next page to continue with this. Here E induced equal to V B L sine theta A B plus V B L sine theta C D. Now, what is theta A B and theta C D? Theta AB depends on the angle difference between this velocity V and magnetic field. So, if we draw these two, so this is the direction of magnetic field B and this is the direction of velocity V. So, the angle difference between them will be Theta AB. Again, for this case, the B is having this direction and B is having this direction. So the angle difference between them is theta CD, which can be written as 180 degree minus theta CD, which is equal to theta AB. Now, if we consider theta CD equals to theta, that is common commonly represented so we can write VBL sine theta AB theta AB can be written as 180 degree minus theta CD 180 degree minus theta of CD plus VBL sine theta CD theta CD Hence, we can write V, V, L, sin 180 degree minus theta equal to sin theta. We can write sin theta as theta CD equal to theta. We have assumed plus V, V, L, sin theta. Eventually, we will get twice V, V, L, sin theta. The total induced voltage is the summation of induced voltage in this wire and the summation of induced voltage in this wire. So, if we have a single loop in a uniform magnetic field and if it's rotating, the we'll get twice of the induced voltage as we get for single conducting wire. Now, if the rotational speed is defined by omega, angle theta can be said as theta equal to omega t. Also, this tangential velocity v of the edges of the loop can be expressed in terms of omega which can be written as v equal to r omega where r is the radius from the center to this conducting wire so this length is represented by r hence e in this can be written as equal to twice r omega b l sine omega t. So, this is the equation which provides us the information on voltage generator in a single loop which is placed in a uniform magnetic field. That loop is rotating with angular velocity of omega. And we can see the voltage generated in the loop is a sinusoidal. 
in nature whose magnitude depends on this angular velocity and the magnitude of the magnetic field if you consider the length of the wire that means length of the loop and radius of the loop remains constant generally these two parameters remain constant once the generator is constructed we cannot change these two parameters so what we can change we can change the angular velocity of the generator and we can change the magnetic field from physical point of view we can also predict that it will produce a sinusoidal nature waveform because when this portion of the wire when this portion of the wire is crossing this line perpendicular with this uh, magnetic field direction so it will have the maximum magnitude then when it will come here then it will have minimum magnitude then again this point after some time comes here then again it cuts the magnetic field with 90 degree angle difference sine 90 degree is equal to 1 where we'll get the maximum magnitude but this magnitude will be the opposite of the previous magnitude if we consider this magnitude as maximum positive then it will be the maximum negative so in this way as we rotate with angular velocity omega it will produce a sinusoidally changing induced voltage so for a single loop rotating conductor the induced voltage will have a sinusoidal shape so if you plot this what will be the maximum magnitude the maximum magnitude will be phi r omega b l and the minimum magnitude will be minus phi r omega b l in this direction we have t now i want all of you to analyze what will happen if the loop is rotating with higher angular velocity than this one what will happen to the frequency and what will happen to the amplitudes so you analyze and compare with the reference figure and what will happen if this loop is rotating with an angular velocity slower than this one so that you have very clear conception how to change the frequencies and magnitudes when you will construct a generator one thing you need to know this is e induced that means induced emf for one single loop but if you have n number of loops in this conducting wire for example then the loop will look like this we have one loop so in this way we may have lots of loop and at the end will take this output these are two terminals and we have n numbers of loops for that case what will be the equation for e induced e induced will be multiplied by this n so e induced can be written as twice n r omega b l sine omega t and this is the final equation for a induced having n number of turns which is placed in a uniform magnetic field like this in our today's class the loop case has been shown for generator case we'll conclude here today in the next class we will analyze the same for motor actions